Howdy folks, how are y'all doing? My name is Reese, and today I'm going to be showing you how to play any Minecraft mod pack under the sun, all inside of one single launcher, that being PolyMC. PolyMC is a fork of MultiMC, and it allows you to download mod packs from pretty much any place in the internet, all from within one window, one screen, and you can even add mods to mod packs without ever having to leave PolyMC. Now, before we start the tutorial, I want to show you why I use PolyMC and explain it. There was a whole lot of hullabaloo, hullabaloo <laughs> over PolyMC splitting into yet another fork called Prism, due, owing to some, some differences in opinion about certain issues that have nothing to do with Minecraft, and different people went in different directions, and... I'm not going to get into the details because it doesn't matter, but if we have a look here, this is PolyMC. This is what we're going to be using. The alternative is the Prism Launcher. Now, initially, when the project split and went in two different directions, I went with the Prism Launcher because that seemed to be where all the developers went. And that was really my only rationale. I just wanted to be on the most supported platform. And to be clear, this is more supported. If we go to news on the Prism Launcher and we go to news on PolyMC, you'll see the last update for PolyMC was the 7th of January. So it's been three quarters of a year almost since this was updated. To be frank, nothing is broken. Nothing has not worked for me. I've not needed updates, but the Prism Launcher has had quite a few more updates, the most recent one being in June. But not all of the updates to the Prism Launcher have been good. And this is why I switched from the Prism Launcher Back to PolyMC, if we have a look over here on Reddit, the Prism Launcher removed FTB modpack support with version 7 as requested by the FTB modpack developers. And you can see here that Reddit is not happy about that. I wasn't either. I have nothing against the Feed the Beast team, but I don't want to have to go get a separate launcher. I want everything in one place. Prism used to offer that, they no longer do, which is why I switched back to PolyMC. And I, I really quickly want to give the FTB team some credit here. If you want to use the official FTB app, they used to bake it in with some digital cancer called Overwolf, which was just an extra thing you had to have running on your system to play FTB packs on Windows. I don't game on Windows, it didn't really apply to me, but it always bothered me. And if you go to the Feed the Beast website now and you want to download their browser uh, or their uh, launcher, you can now choose if you want the Windows version with Digital Cancer or the Windows version standalone. So I'm assuming Sans Overwolf, which is cool. So if you want to use the Prism Launcher for, you know, 80% of your mod packs and then get the actual FTB Launcher, you could do that. And that would be perfectly fine. And they've got a launcher for, you know, Windows, Mac, Linux, various dis different distros there. The FTB Launcher is fine now. Prism is fine. I use PolyMC because I like that it's all in one. All of that out of the way, let me show you how to use it. The link in the description will take you to this page where you're going to have a couple of massive download buttons, one right here in the middle of the screen and one over here at the top right, and it does not matter which one you click. I'm going to click this one in the middle of the screen, which will take you to the downloads page. And actually, now that I think about it, the first link in the description will take you to this downloads page. I'm going to save you that click. Here you can pick your version. You can go with Windows, Mac OS. This is universal. So whether you have a Intel CPU or you are on Apple Silicon, this is the download you want. Linux, uh, you can actually get this as a flat pack. So if your distro has a store with flat packs in it, uh, you can just download it there. That's how I actually play. I'm a Linux gamer. I'm required by law to tell you that. They even have a Steam Pack version, a uh, Steam Deck version even, which is, uh, I'm pretty sure it's just the regular flat pack version. Uh, but for Steam Deck, maybe it has controller support built in. I don't know. Whatever you're gaming on, I'm doing this tutorial on Windows because I think 90% of you are going to be on Windows, if not more. Uh, just select the version you need. I'm going to go with the EXE. If you want to install it on a thumb drive and take it with you, you can get the portable. And if that's the sort of thing you do on the regular, you probably already know what you're doing there. But we're going to get the regular old installer.exe and download that, save file, and this is going to put it into my downloads folder. I oftentimes have people ask me during tutorials, hey, I downloaded it, but I don't know where it went. I don't know why it wouldn't be in your downloads folder. I'm not at your computer, but if you are using either Chrome or a Chromium-based browser, it'll show you down in the bottom left where your downloads are. If you're using something like LibreWolf or any Firefox-based browser like I am, it'll be up here in the top right. Click on that. PolyMC, and you can click on this folder icon to open your downloads, and it'll show you exactly where it is, or you can click directly on the file to launch and begin the installation. 
In this case, I just went to the downloads folder and I'm going to double click on the PolyMC Windows Setup 6.1 or whatever version is available when you go to download. I'm also gonna go ahead and close this window because I no longer need it open. Uh, welcome to the PolyMC setup. We're gonna click next. If you would like to have a start menu shortcut on Windows, I'd recommend it. You can leave that selected or you can get rid of it. If you'd like to have a desktop shortcut, you can enable that as well, but I'm not really a, a dirty desktop kind of guy. I try to keep things clean. I'm gonna click next. You can choose your destination folder. If you don't know what you're doing, by default, leave it as it is and it'll install it in the same place your Minecraft data is. So if you've ever gone to percent app data percent, and that's where your Minecraft folder is. That's where this will be also. I'm going to click install. It's going to begin the installation process. And then when we're done, we can click finish to run PolyMC. But we're not finished yet. So the first thing you're going to be confronted with is this pop-up that asks whether or not you want to essentially violate CurseForge's uh, terms and conditions, their terms of service by clicking yes. Now I can't tell you to click yes. Clicking yes will give you the best experience in the app, but I don't want to encourage you to break terms of service by clicking yes. So follow your own <laughs> consciousness here and pick whichever option you're comfortable with. Uh, do what you think is the right thing. I'm not going to tell you what I'm going to do. Once you've made your choice there, regardless of what you chose, this is what you will see. This is the actual launcher itself. This is PolyMC 6.1. And before we begin adding mod packs and going through the settings, the first thing we need to do is add a Microsoft account. So we're going to go over here where it says profiles and we're going to select manage accounts and then we're going to add a Microsoft account. There's the option to add a Mojang account, but you can't really do that anymore. So just add Microsoft. Now you will need to own Minecraft, a legitimate copy of Minecraft in order to download mod packs and play them. I know that's disappointing. A lot of people come to these sort of tutorials hoping to find ways to kind of yar her and uh, Jimmy me timbers or whatever they say. That's not what I'm going to show you how to do today. This is a tutorial for people who already own Java Minecraft, uh, minecraft.net, if you don't. But hit Add Microsoft, and it's going to bring up this page where it's going to give you a code, which I recommend double-click, right-click, copy, uh, or you can type it out on the next section of the guide. You're going to get microsoft.com slash link. Click on that, and it should open your browser to a page where it's going to ask you to put in that code. So again, you can either copy and then right-click and paste it, or you can type it out yourself. Click allow access. You're going to need to sign into your account here. If you're already signed in in your browser, you might not have to sign in again. As you can see, I'm already signed in, but for the sake of the tutorial, let's say we want to sign in with a different Microsoft account. I'm going to walk you through it as if you had never been signed in before. So it's going to take you to this page where you're going to punch in your uh, email address that is associated with the Microsoft account in which you own Minecraft. So punch that in and click next. It'll either prompt you to enter a password or if you have Authenticator like I do, open the Authenticator, select the number on the screen that matches and the Authenticator. If you click the right number, it will actually work. <laughs> There you go. I'm going to choose to say signed in. You are now signed into PolyMC. You can safely close this window. So when you're done, close the window. And as you can see back here, it's migrating in your account. And there I am. So you can now safely close this setting window, or you can go through some of the setting options. For example, down here, you can look at your Java options. You can see your maximum memory allocation. I never recommend setting this higher than half of your total system memory. So if you have four gigs, set it to two gigs. If you have eight gigs, set it to four. If you have 16, you can set it to eight. If you're going to be using really high resolution resource packs, I do recommend cranking this up quite a bit. And remember, if you don't have a whole lot of system memory, you might not be able to play some of the mod packs. By the by, you might notice that this is not gigabytes. So if you're ever trying to figure out what number to put in here, take how much memory you'd like to allocate. So I have 96 gigs of memory. I'm going to go ahead and throw 16 at it. So 16 and then multiply that. I'm, I've got a calculator here. I'm not just looking down at my hand. Multiply that by 1024 and that'll give you 16. In this case, it'll give you 16, 384. That'll be 16 gigabytes. Now here we have our Java options. Now, depending on what version of Minecraft or what Minecraft mod packs you want to play, you might need a variety of different versions of Java. This is your default version here, and you can change the default if you want to. Uh, you can click auto detect and it'll find all the different versions you have installed in your system. And if you download more, if you get Java 18, 20, et cetera, et cetera, they should show up on this page. If you download more while it's running, just click refresh. And uh, you can choose your default here. 
and that will set it up here. You can also change it on a per pack basis. So if you have some that use 1.8, some that use 1.17, uh, you can change them per pack. I'll show you how to do that. You can also test it just to make sure it's working. So once you have the path selected, go ahead and click test. Java succeeded. That's enough of that though. Here we go, dark mode. Oh, that's much better. So that is located under launcher and then user interface and then colors. I just chose dark. Now let's get to the part you've been waiting for. Let's actually add some Minecraft mod packs. So go to add instance here. And as you can see, we've got vanilla. So if you want to play vanilla all the way back to version 1.0, you can do that here, but we can actually go further back. If you notice over here on the right side, we have filters so we can get rid of releases and we can add in experiments, alphas, betas, old snapshots, snapshots, releases again, but experiments, that's an interesting one, isn't it? Alphas is where it gets fun. That's where you can go all the way back to RD132211, which I'm gonna go ahead and install just for the fun of it. So to install it, you just select it and then click okay, and there it is, and then you hit launch, and it should launch it with this version of Java selected. Welcome to Minecraft, everyone. <laughs> Left click to place blocks, right click to break them. That is, that is, that is perverse. <laughs> it's cool that you can play that though. To escape it, you just hit the escape key. Let's download an old version of beta real quick. We're gonna look at mod packs in a second, but I'm, I'm having fun. So just give me this. Ooh, finally beta. Minecraft, oh man, yeah, back in the day, you didn't have infinite worlds. You had five options to choose from. You could swap them in and out in files, but wow. Man, I would have given anything to have Minecraft run this smoothly on my 2008 MacBook. <laughs> my white plastic MacBook from 2008. This is fantastic. No sprints, no hunger bar. I can't even remember what key. Inventory is set to I by default. Archaic. I mean, very PC. That's how PC games were back in the day. Uh, very cool, though. Look at that render distance. How high can we crank that? Get a load of this. The render distance is far, normal, short, and tiny. How fun is that? There's no actual, like, you can't select how many chunks. It does run very well. Um, I feel like a child again. Okay, we're, we're carrying on. Save and quit to title. Get me out of here. Okay, you came here for mods though, right? So if you have a mod pack downloaded as a zip file, you can actually just add that here. Uh, other options are you've got the AT launcher. So if you want to play Pixelmon or Sky Factory 4, Steph Tech Ages, all the Fabric 5, everything is here. If you want some Curse Forge packs, they're here. FTB is here. FTB Legacy is here. You've got your Modrith and you've got your Technic packs. So if you wanted to play the recently released Tekkit SMP, type it in up there, click search. There it is. Select the version you're looking for, click OK, and it'll begin downloading the mod pack. Everything is here and it's great to have it all in one place. So I told you earlier that different versions of Minecraft require different versions of Java. Our default right now is Java 1.8. I'm going to show you what happens if we changed our default to 17, right? So we're going to click that and we are going to test it. It'll tell us, yep, work just fine. Close that. We're going to attempt to open Tekkit SMP. So there's a couple of different ways to open the pack. You can either double click on it or you can come over here on the right where it says launch, click launch, and this shouldn't work. We, we did a tutorial. There it goes. Okay. Checking Java version. Java is version 17.02 using 64 architecture, blah, 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 blah. What this requires is 1.8. So we're going to close this and you can change it under settings for the entire system, but that will change what every version of Minecraft uses. If you don't want to do that, you can right click here, go to edit instance. Alternatively, you can just have it highlighted and go over here and click edit instance. But in any case, we're going to go down to our settings and then Java, and we're going to tick this box. This box tells PolyMC to ignore the Java settings in its own settings and use specific settings for this pack. I'm going to click on auto detect, select 1.8, click OK, and then we're going to click launch again. And this time it should actually launch the pack using Java version 1.8. I'm going to go ahead and safely close this window. And as you can see, TechIt SMP is loading just fine. While that happens over to the side, I'm going to show you some things that I really like about this. So for example, if you wanted to add mods, and I don't recommend doing this while the game is running. I don't even know if it'll let you. But if you come over here to where it says view mods, it'll show you a list of every mod installed in this mod pack. 
And then, yeah, it doesn't look like we can actually add more right now, but I'll show you that as soon as it's done. So there we go. We got Tekkit SMP loaded, and as you can see, it worked just fine. But something I like about PolyMC that you can do is if you wanted to, first off, you can come over here to the View Mods page and view all the mods that are installed. And if you wanted to add mods, you can click up here in the top right where it says Download Mods, and then select CurseForge. We're looking for Java mods in this case. So let's say you wanted to add hats, where all of the animals have hats. We kill the animal, you get the hat. Just select that, and you can click Select Mod for Download down here. And then let's say you wanted to have gravestones. Those don't come by default. Just type in gravestones, pick your gravestone mod of choice. Again, click Select Mod for Download. And then when you're ready, when you have all the mods you want added, just click right here where it says Review and Confirm. It'll say, OK, you want to install gravestone mod, hats mod, click OK. It'll download them. They're in the pack now. So now when you open Tech at SMP, it'll launch with those mods. You don't have to do anything. It does it all for you. You can also, if you wanted to uh, play around with different things in the configs folder, click that button and it'll immediately take you into the configs folder for the mod pack. Just make sure you have the mod pack highlighted. You can also right click on it and do that. Take it to the instance folder, the Minecraft folder. There's so many cool things you can do here. Heck, if you wanted to, and, and I want to make a full video about this at some point, but you could make your own mod pack in here with just the mods you wanted. Let's say you wanted to play the latest version of Minecraft, okay? Uh, come down here, say you want to use Fabric. So you can select this version of Fabric and click OK. It'll have it installed right there. Double click on it to launch. This might not work. I think we need a newer version of Java that I don't have installed, if I'm not mistaken. But if it does, it'll crash and tell me. Yeah, there you go. If you scroll all the way down to the bottom, it'll say this instance is not compatible with Java 17. Please switch to one of the following Java versions for this instance, Java version 21. Right, so I went to Oracle's website and I downloaded JDK 21, and I'm going to set that up as the default specifically for this mod pack uh, to supersede whatever the launcher default is. We're going to go over to Edit Instance, and we're going to select Settings, click this button, Auto Detect, click Refresh, and look at that, there is version 21. I'm going to select that, click OK. And now when we click launch, it should load the mod pack. There we go. We're loaded into Minecraft. It worked. So we're going to go ahead and get quit game. I'm going to close this window and I'm going to go over to view mods. Now, right now there are none, but we're going to add some download mods. And uh, remember, we selected this to be a fabric version of Minecraft. What mods do we want in our custom Minecraft? Well, uh, clumping XP orbs sounds pretty good. So we're going to select that one. All-in-one mod that fixes performance, reduces memory usage, sure, sounds good. You might want to do some research to make sure that all of these things that we are adding are compatible with one another. I'm just picking kind of random things. Journey map, of course. Nature compass, want that for sure. Biomes of plenty. If there's a compatible version, absolutely. So I'm going to review and confirm. I'm adding these mods. Click OK. It's going to download and install them. Now let's launch our custom Minecraft. OK, it did not work. Oh, I should probably add the fabric API. Things are going well so far. Have a look at that. F11 to make it full screen. Single player. We're going to create a new world. We'll just call it test world. We'll go into creative. We're going to click create new world. And it's going to start generating us a lovely little starting area. There we go. Journey map is installed. If we press J, we have our journey map options, including, oh, look at all the developers up there. Isn't that fantastic? Look at this. Wonderful. Everything is working so far. JEI appears to be working just fine. We've got all of our different craftables over there. So that was a huge tangent that had nothing to do with this video. Uh, going back to what we were talking about, if you want to install something like an FTB pack, Direwolf Presents 1.20. Okay, start installing that. There you go. And it lives alongside all of our other mod packs. We can create. Now I've got a whole bunch of different versions of Minecraft installed. I've got Tegit SMP. I've got Direwolf 20. I've got a modern vanilla with some mods. We've got a couple of older, older vanilla versions. Let's say we want to separate these into different groupings. Select the pack you want to separate off and then go over here to where it says change group. Click on change group, add a group name. We're going to move this to Technic Packs. Uh, you can call it whatever you want to. Click OK. It'll separate it off into its own little section down here. And if you wanted to add something to that, all you gotta do is just drag it into place. Now that's not a Technic pack. Uh, if we right click, we can do pretty much the same thing. Go down here to change group and we can add this to FTB packs. 
And there you go. And as you can see, we can start sectioning them off so they don't all get mixed up. And if you want to, you can shrink these to keep things nice and tidy. So that pretty much does it for this tutorial. I hope that you liked it, found it useful. If you did, I'm glad to hear it. Until next time, thank you folks for watching. God bless you, and I'll see you later. Goodbye!